Hello! Today we are going to discuss a very trendy topic. It has made the news and it fills up my Twitter feed these days. And the topic is OpenAI's GPT-3. In this video we will discuss three things. What is GPT-3? What can GPT-3 do? We will have some cool apps and examples. And how much do we know or not know about GPT-3 and what potential problems and limitations might be? Let's start with the first question. What is GPT-3? No, GPT-3 is not a time zone. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer and is more or less a very cool and sophisticated language or sequence continuator. The word transformer is referring to the transformer of 2017 invented by Google. 2018's GPT uses the transformer modules and has a total of 110 million parameters. But 2019's GPT-2 brought 1.5 billion parameters to the game. The GPT language model, trained on next word prediction, can generate continuations of text so well that OpenAI was afraid to release the model, worried that it might be used for generating deep fakes and false text in news. Well, this is 2020, and this year has brought us many things, but it has also given us GPT-3 that has no less than 175 billion parameters. What will 2021 bring us? The GPT-3 architecture is the same as the predecessors GPT-2 and GPT, only bigger. Does size matter though? Well, kind of. With many parameters the model can solve more complicated problems, but with many parameters one should also train on larger and larger amounts of training data to avoid overfitting. Do you remember science fiction movies where the AI can finally connect to the internet and becomes extremely powerful, reaching the singularity and surpassing the human intelligence? Well, we are not in that situation yet. But we have to acknowledge the sheer amount of data the 175 billion parameters were trained on. GPT-3 has more or less seen the whole internet, and this has implications we do not grasp yet. So what can GPT-3 do after it has seen so much? This leads us to the next part of the video. As the GPT-3 paper already said, it's in the title, GPT-3 is very good at few-shot learning. Few-shot means that only very few training examples are needed to get good performance on the task. When we were younger, <laughs> who are we kidding? This was a few weeks ago. So again, when we were only a little bit younger, we had to fine-tune pre-trained models like BERT or GPT-2 on not so small datasets with task-specific annotation. Nowadays, similar results to fine-tuning can be achieved only by giving to GPT-3 some few task-specific examples. GPT-3 seems to do it all. Or can it, though? We will discuss this towards the end of the video. For now, let's see where GPT-3 shines. While the paper discussed benchmarks or not so benchmark cases, we will here see what the community on Twitter could do with the API of GPT-3. If you are interested to play with it yourself, you can request access and hope you get it. Fewshot is the first topic here in our showcase, where Michael posts about his successful attempt to convert legal text into commoner's English. By showing only two examples to GPT-3, the model was able to create even more similar results. See for yourself. Well, you could say that all this is a very good pattern matching algorithm, which it more or less is. So here is an example of another kind of pattern matching where Paul Katzen created one spreadsheet function with GPT-3, which can look up state population, Twitter usernames and employers and do math. Needless to say that AI before GPT-3 could do these things, but only after being trained on lots of such data and could hardly do all these things enumerated here at once. Not convinced yet? We have more. 
Yash built a bot with GPT-3 that generates financial statements. Just amazing. Unsurprisingly, since it is a language model, GPT-3 is perfect for text completion, like for generating automated answers to emails, so you do not have to write those yourself anymore, do you? Emails are perhaps not surprising. What about poetry? Preserving verse and ensuring rhymes? I am not so happy about this example in particular, since I hoped coding was one of the last things AI would do. But here it is. Check out these examples by Sharif Shamim, where GPT-3 is generating code from just descriptions of what one wants to do. What about chatbots with impersonation skills? If you always wanted to chat with Elon Musk, but he was too busy to chat with you, you can chat with GPT-3 impersonating him instead. Many deep fake storms ahead. This beautiful example used Google to extract the text from image and then processed the text with GPT-3 to extract ingredients Find an emoji, determine if it's unhealthy, and give a definition. OMG. <laughs> GPT-3 can also be a search engine if you want. Are there any limits? One more example, this time a funny one, where Merz Mensch Kosmopol asked GPT-3 about God. He certainly has no questions anymore. Now let us speak about the elephant in the room, coming to our last question. What if this few-shot behavior is just happening because GPT-3 has seen it all during training and now our tasks we come up with are not so new to the model at the end of the day? Well, we just do not know, and Emily Bender just said it. I don't find anything linguistically interesting about massive language models, especially without detailed information about their training data. She has a point here. Especially, we need to know what all of the training data was when thinking about harmful biases, like in this example, with really unpleasant results. The huge amount of data means also a lot of compute power used during training. The GPT-3 paper says, practical large-scale pre-training requires large amounts of computation, which is energy-intensive. Training the GPT-3 consumed several thousands days of petaflops per second of compute during pre-training, compared to tens of days of petaflops per second for a smaller GPT-2 model. This is a problem for normal researchers, especially for academia in many countries where compute resources are rather scarce. The second problem is of course the environmental impact of the energy consumption during long training sessions. The OpenAI paper brings a defense point about energy consumption. The paper says, though models like GPT-3 consume significant resources during training, they can be surprisingly efficient once trained. Even with the full GPT-3, generating 100 pages of content from a pre-trained model can cost on the order of 0.4 kilowatt hour or only a few cents in energy costs. This is a fair point, but we ask ourselves, what if this training of bigger and bigger models on even more training data becomes the trend of the future and training and developing huge models consuming lots of energy just goes on and on? GPT-3 performs so well, as seen in the Twitter examples or in the GPT-3 paper, on sentence generation, machine translation and so on, that, so it's normal that the model seems very, very attractive to large-scale industry and seems like the future will have a lot of applications with GPT-3 built in them. 
Well, I do not want to make anyone worry about this, but the GPT-3 paper also shows that the model is very susceptible to adversarial attacks. These attacks show how problematic it might be if GPT-3 deployed somewhere is targeted with malicious adversarial attacks. More about adversarial attacks in the next video. Well, a lot is still to be investigated here and I hope that OpenAI will tell us more about the data it has trained the model on for a start. If OpenAI becomes more open and grants wider access to the model, the AI research landscape will certainly change. Just an example, during the last years, the frequent and probably the most annoying paper reviewer question was, why didn't you use BERT? Ms. Coffee Bean already prepares herself for the next reviewer question at conferences. Why didn't you use GPT-3? Anyway, until we know more, Miss Coffee Bean seems to agree with this opinion here, which in our translation sounds like this. GPT-3 is like a small child that looked at the whole internet, does not understand anything, but can repeat everything. And Jörn Erbgut also delivers an example where if asked in a certain manner, GPT-3 responds that the sun has an eye, a blade of grass has an eye too. So we have seen with this example that this child does not have a lot of common sense. Only that this child can solve what AI has been trying to solve for decades and this child will become some kind of an oracle, I'm afraid. Well, these are certainly interesting times to be alive. <laughs>